Welcome to the JavaScript API video, Tips and Tricks. This video is part of a tutorial series. If you have no idea what the JavaScript API is or you don't know how to embed, I recommend going back and watching the JavaScript API introduction. We'll also build on some of the things we learned in the video titled Embedding and Interaction. So you don't have to watch that as a prerequisite, but if you don't know how to embed and do basic filtering, that kind of thing, we'll be building on some of that information, so I recommend watching that first. If you already know how to do some of that basics and you're ready to get started with some intermediate and advanced tips and tricks with the JavaScript API. If you'd like to follow along, which I strongly recommend for this video, Go to github.com slash tableau slash JSAPI videos and download all of that content. Let's talk about the goals of this specific video. First of all, I'd like to teach you about some common gotchas with the JavaScript API. There are a few things that almost every JavaScript API developer runs into, so we'd like to save you some time by showing you those ahead of time. We also want to teach you about the asynchronous nature of using the JavaScript API. If you haven't used asynchronous coding before, this will look confusing at first, so running through a couple of basic examples will help a lot. We'll also teach you how to create event listeners with the JavaScript API. These are really nice ways to have your website respond to things that are happening on the dashboard, and it creates a really nice integrated look and feel. Now, we don't need you to be an expert of HTML, JavaScript, and web development in general in order to follow along with this video. But if this is your first time seeing HTML and JavaScript, you might get a little bit lost. So if that's the case for you, I recommend following one of the many free online tutorials for web development, HTML, and JavaScript, at least so that you've written a few lines of JavaScript code, you know how HTML and JavaScript work together. That'll get you started. Specifically for this video, we need you to have at least a basic understanding of the JavaScript ideas of functions, arrays, and loops, because we'll be writing some of all of these. And so if you've seen them before, it'll help you a lot. Now to get started, as I said, first step is to go to github.com slash tableau slash JSAPI videos. Download all that content and then fire up your favorite text editor. You'll notice I'm using Visual Studio Code, which is a nice free text editor released by Microsoft. But you can use whatever you want, whether that's Sublime Text, Atom, or any other, any other text editor that has coding-specific functionality. Specifically open up the folder 04 Tips and Tricks and grab the files JSAPI Tips and Tricks Beginning, HTML, and JS. You'll also notice there are two other files without that beginning word in them. Those are the finished products where we'll seek to go by the end of this video. So feel free to open up, open, open up those files as well to help you follow along if you'd like. All right. Actually, before I show you some code, let me hop on over to the video that will, the, the website that we'll be making. Here's the website in its current version with JS API tips and tricks beginning. If you've watched the previous video, this is going to look familiar. It's got an embedded dashboard, which we've already written the code for. It also allows us already to switch from view to view. We've added one new button from the last video, which is the ability to switch to this dashboard. We've also added a couple of buttons down here below to teach you the basics of asynchronous programming. So we'll be writing some of the code for these functions down here. Now let's hop on over to the HTML file, JSAPI tips and tricks beginning. We actually won't write any HTML here. As you can see, it already has the two lines of code necessary to load the JS files. It's got our empty div, and it's got all of those buttons that we just pointed out. One thing that was added from the last uh, video is this new div called sheet name. Our goal here will be to always display the current, current sheet 
here in this empty div. That'll, that'll use our event listeners that I talked about earlier, and you'll see that once we get there. So that's it for this HTML. As I said, we won't be writing any code here. We'll do it all in our JS file. But before I do that, there's a couple of gotchas that I'd like to talk about. The first concept I want to talk about is our new versioning system. And this has changed since 8.x. In 8.x, we had a file called tableau underscore v8.js that you would load into your HTML to access the API. In 9.0, we changed that to tableau-2.0.0. And this was the beginning of us versioning the JavaScript API. This means that we will eventually release 2.0.1, 0.2, etc. And that's how you access the new versions. Starting in 9.0, however, you can also just load tableau-2.js, and this will load the latest version that falls under tableau-2. Another thing to note here about the loading of files, and another thing that is different than in 8.x, is that .js file by default is a debug version or a development version. That is, it has all of the white space in it. So as you're writing your code, you'll be able to step through nicely through that .js file. But for production, some people may choose to use the .min.js. This is a minified version. It's basically removed all of the white space. That makes it smaller in size and quicker to load. And so that can be a good option for your production code. One common gotcha of the JavaScript API is forgetting to publish with Sheets as tabs. This is a screen from Tableau Desktop when the user decides to publish their workbook. If you do not check Show Sheets as tabs, you will get an error that when you try to switch from tab to tab that that tab doesn't exist, even though you know you've published that other tab or that other sheet. And that's because you didn't publish with Sheets as tab tabs. So if you're using the JavaScript API, be sure to publish with Sheets as tabs so you can switch from tab to tab or from sheet to sheet. If your dashboard lives on Tableau Public, this works a little bit differently. You do it from the web interface, but you do it on that dashboard options page. Here's the next most common gotcha. You're trying to filter on a, on a visualization or a workbook, and you see this error inside of your console. So you click the button or you try to run that code. No filtering happens. You go on over to your console and you see sheet.applyfilterasync is not a function. Of course, you know that sheet.applyfilterasync is a function. It's in our documentation. We, we've already written that code in our other videos. So what gives? Well, if you see this, it's a dead giveaway that you're trying to apply a filter on a dashboard which you can't do. And I'll tell you why. Here is the class diagram or a portion of the class diagram for the JavaScript API. At the top, you see workbook. And below that, you see sheet. So we know that to apply a filter, we have to do it at the sheet level. We call viz.getworkbook.getActiveSheet, and then we, we call apply filter async to that sheet object. Below on this class diagram, you see that it's sheet, the abstract class sheet splits into two other class types. One is called worksheet and one is called dashboard. What this is saying is that every tab or sheet in this case, in, in, in this lingo, can be either a dashboard or it can be a worksheet. If it's a worksheet, then we can apply filter async. But if it is a dashboard, we cannot. And that's when you would get sheet.applyfilterasync is not a function. What do you do if you are on a dashboard? Well, you have to call got, dot get worksheets, which you see there in the middle, to grab all of the worksheets in the dashboard, and then you can apply the filter to those worksheet objects. Let's actually hop into our code and do that. 
Here is our JS API tips and tricks beginning.js. If you scroll down to lines 29 through 32, you see our show function from the previous video. It does just as I described, grabs the sheet object from getActiveSheet, calls sheet.applyFilterAsync. And again, this will work if the current active sheet is a worksheet and not a dashboard. Let's replace this code with some code that actually checks whether we are on a dashboard or not. So we replace it with on line 31, we're checking the sheet type. So we grab sheet, we call sheet.getSheetType. This will return either tableau.sheetType.worksheet or tableau.sheetType.dashboard. And there's also a storyboard as well. If we are on worksheet, then we know we can just apply the filter the same way we previously did. And you'll notice lines 32, line 32 is the same as uh, it used to be. If it's a worksheet, then sheet.applyFilterAsync, that's all we need to do. If we get to this else statement here, then we know we're on a dashboard. Or more precisely, we know that sheet.getSheetType equals tableau.sheetType.dashboard. If we are on a dashboard, we need to handle things a little bit differently. We, as I said before, we need to call get worksheets and go down to that level to apply the filter. Now exactly how you do this will depend on your use case. Are you just, do you just want to apply it to a single sh worksheet on that dashboard or do you want to apply it to all? The, code's online, the code on line 34 through 36 assumes the latter, that we want to apply it to all of the worksheets. So we start on line, on line 34. Worksheet array equals sheet that get worksheets. Grab the worksheet array. It returns an array and we store that in our variable worksheet array. Then we will loop through that array from zero to the length of the worksheet array. And for each of those, we will apply filter async. And so that's why lines 36 and 32 look pretty similarly because we're calling worksheet sub i dot apply filter async. Now we can hit save here, head on back over to Chrome, hit refresh, and our show books always worked, but now if we go to dashboard and hit show books, it's going to filter both of the worksheets on this dashboard. Now one of the next challenges of using the JavaScript API is the asynchronous nature of it. A really good example of a situation where you need to use asynchronous programming with the JavaScript API is the desire to have one button that switches tabs and then does something else, for example, filters. We've already written in previous videos, work, activate sheet async and apply filter async. So you might think that's all that is necessary to do those in order is to call activate sheet async, then grab the active sheet, and then apply the filter async as you see here. But let's go back to our website here, and that's actually called problem example. Let's click on problem example. Actually, sorry, let's refresh so that we don't have any filters going on. We'll click on problem example. It switches to that line chart, but it doesn't do any filtering for us. Why is that? Well, the reason is when we switch tabs, there's a little spinner there. It takes, you know, a split second, but still some time to load the other dash, the other sheet or dashboard. And the way we wrote our code with just semicolon, then write the apply filter, it's trying to execute while that spinner is going. Ta the dashboard isn't ready to accept filters when we tried to write that code. So what we need to do instead is to switch sheets, 
wait until the switching of the sheets is done and then apply the filter. And that's exactly what asynchronous programming allows us to do. So let's take a look at exactly how you write that asynchronous programming to wait until the biz is switched before running the filtering. So here's our function called solution. Basically what I'm saying here is this is the correct version of the problem example. Where it says adds async code, that's where we'll add our code. So after activate sheet async, we call a very important function called dot then you pass in a function of code that you want to run when the previous function has finished. Let me repeat that. Dot then allows you to say, here is some code that I want to run when the previous function is done running. In this case, activate sheet async runs. Remember, it takes a split second to finish that spinner. And then we want to say dot then run some other code. We pass in a function. In this case, we just create a new function, also known as an anonymous function. And inside of it, we write the code that we want to occur when the sheet is finished switching. Once the sheet is done finishing, then we write var sheet equals workbook dot get active sheet and sheet dot apply filtered async. Lines 61 and 62 are the same as up here, 52 and 53. So the only difference is that instead of just writing a semicolon and then moving on to applying the filter, we say dot then start running some other code, not until it's done. There's a little bit of a syntax. If you haven't seen if this kind of uh, anonymous function or function inside of another function, that kind of thing. It's going to look a little weird for a little while. Uh, so there's a little bit of syntax differences, especially down here. You got to make sure to close your inside function, then close your dot then parenthesis, and then uh, close out that entire statement. But the result of all of that, if you hit save, is we can hop back over into uh, sorry, back into Chrome. And now our solution button should work. Hit solution. Oops, did I hit save there? Let's hop back on over. Oh, sorry, I didn't hit refresh. Now I can hit solution, switch tabs, filter, and in fact, I'll refresh. This time, kind of wa uh, watch it. Um, you can even see those happen in sequence. So I'll hit solution boom, boom, you can see this, the asynchronous uh, programming work. Just a little summary of what we talked about. Dot then executes some code after a JavaScript API uh, function finishes. One key uh, thing to look for is any JavaScript API function that has the word async in it, that means that you can call dot then on it. Otherwise, you don't even need to because you can just execute the code below it. Also, this is a whole subject inside of the developer docs because there are other functions such as dot else, dot uh, always, uh, and I recommend opening that up if you need to learn more about asynchronous programming. The next intermediate subject of the JavaScript API is event listeners. As I said, these are really nice ways to give an, a more integrated look and feel to the embedded dashboard. This is code that will execute when the user does something. So everything we've done so far is there's a button outside of the dashboard. I click on it, and it makes something happen on my dashboard. Let's go the other way. Let's have the user click something on the dashboard and have it change something on our website outside of that dashboard. That's exactly what event listeners are for. Let's write our first event listener back here in our JS file. 
the best place to add the JS, uh, the, to add the event listeners is right down below your instantiation call of the viz inside of the window.onload. So I'll do that here on line 18. And I'll add a mark selection event. To add an event listener, all you have to do is call viz.addEventListener. The first argument is the, the type of event. You saw on the previous slide that there are a variety of types of events. The most common ones are mark selection, tab, filter change. You enter which type of event you'd like to listen to. The second argument is a function. What function do you want to call as a response to the user selecting some marks? In this case, we just do a very simple one. Just do a pop-up that says the user selected marks. So we'll, sit, say, we'll hit save here, hop back on over to our browser and hit refresh. Now the user is interacting, hovering, etc. The user clicks on a mark. We get a pop-up, the user selected marks. Okay, that's great, except for that's not exactly a practical example. We'd like to actually do something that provides some functionality to the end user. Now, remember back in the HTML, I had this new empty div called sheet name. What we'd like to do is take the sheet name and throw it in there. But I can't just hard code that in because the user might be switching from tab to tab. We gave them that functionality after all. So what we need to do is when the user changes tabs to change that HTML to the new sheet name they're on. And that's exactly what we'll use a, an event listener for. Here it is, viz.addEventListener tab switch. So it's not when the user selects marks, it's when the user switches from tab to tab. And that's whether they're using the JavaScript API or not. When the user switches tabs will run this function. Now every mark every event listener has this passes into its function an event object which you can grab information from. In this case we need it because it'll contain information about the new sheet name. So we'll grab that event, we'll call event.getNewSheetName and we will pass that in to our uh, HTML. How do we do that? Well, first of all, we grab document.getElement by ID sheet name. That's the name of the, uh, the div we created. And then we call .innerHTML to pass it in. We grab that inner HTML, we grab the new sheet name, and we put it into the, into the website. Let's go ahead and hit save and see what that looks like. Here it is, back again. No additional buttons we need to click on, but as I switch from sheet to sheet, you can see that this new div here is changing to the correct text. Okay, great. Now there's only one problem with this technique is that the way we did it is that when I load the, the visualization, it doesn't show up because they, the user hasn't yet switched sheets. What we'd like to do is take that similar code, grab the current sheet name, throw it into that, that HTML div, but do that when the viz initially loads. And this is a common thing in the JavaScript API. Wanting to run some code only once the dashboard has finished loading. For example, maybe you, your dashboard's going to take a few seconds to load. You don't want to confuse the user with all these buttons on the left-hand column. So you want to wait until the dashboard is done loading before you give them the option for that so they don't get confused. Or maybe in this case, we, just like we're doing here, you want to grab some information from the viz, but you can't grab any information from the viz until it's done loading. To achieve that concept of running some code when the viz is done loading, you can do that in here in the inside of the options object for the viz. 
Now we're gonna add one below hide tab. So be sure to add a uh, comma here if you don't already have one. And then the code for that looks like this. It's a different entry into the options object called on first interactive. And what that takes in is a function. In this case, well, again, we'll use uh, an anonymous function. And everything we write inside of that function will be code that is run when the dashboard is done loading. When the spinner stops running, let's run some code. In this case, it's very similar as below on line 24. It's document.getElementById.innerHTML. The right side of this call is a little bit different because there's no event.get sheet, new sheet name because there's no event. So we just call it the normal way, viz.getworkbook.getActiveSheet. We've gotten the active sheet. Let's get the name from it with dot get name. Pass that into the HTML and hit save. So I'll switch back to the browser now and I'll hit refresh. And as I do that, you can see that tree map, as soon as the dashboard is done loading, it displays the name of the visualization that we're looking at. We still have our event listener to display it there. But once again, if I show you, if we refresh, as soon as it's done loading, it displays tree map. That's it for this video. We've hopefully taught you a variety of things, handling some common gotchas, as well as teaching you some advanced techniques such as asynchronous programming and event listeners. I recommend looking for ideas in your own projects to use event listeners and asynchronous programming because some of the best Examples of the JavaScript API I've seen utilize those in creative ways. Where should you go from here? Well, first of all, always start with the Tableau developer portal, developers.tableau.com. It's a one-stop shop for everything related to extensibility and APIs for Tableau. Specifically, you should go check out the API developer docs. Of course, we can only scratch the surface in these uh, video series, but at this point, you should have enough tools at your disposal to open up those dev docs and start digging into some of the details and other functions that we weren't able to talk about today. You can watch an introductory tutorial on that, which will talk about all the subjects we talked about, um, coded in slightly different ways, so it's a good uh, secondary practice if you'd like. And then you can ask any com question you'd like on our community forum where a lot of API experts hang out and answer people's questions. Be sure to keep track of YouTube. Go youtube.com, search for hashtag data dev. Click on the playlist and you'll see all of our videos related to JavaScript API, web data connector, and any other videos we make on uh, Tableau extensibility. Good place to keep track of the things we're working on over here. Finally, if you don't have all of the content yet, you can always return to github.com slash tableau slash JS API videos. Grab all of the sample code we talked about here today, as well as any of the slides from this series. That's it for now. Thanks for joining. Hope you learned a lot. Goodbye.